it's good to stay on a healthy diet but let's face it we all deserve a treat now and then we all crave that pizza those momos that pasta and that paneer tikka however eating them outside puts us off our fitness goals which we then regret later moreover there most of these foods are pre cooked just preheated and served to you but what if we make all these lip smacking dishes a fresh at home in this video i'm going to share with you seven healthy occasional treats that will spice up your healthy lifestyle without rushing your fitness goals while deciding the recipes my sole focus was on taste a taste that will make you want to eat that comfort food at home a taste that would change your cheat meal to treat meal so without any further delay let's get started Hello friends, welcome to FitTuber. Starting with number 7 on the list are momos. One of the most popular street foods in India, momos are a go-to treat for many. Let's make a healthier version of momos. To begin with, in a bowl put around 2 cups of whole wheat flour. Put 2 teaspoons of cold pressed sesame oil and rock salt to taste. Now with a bit of water, knead the dough normally as you would do it for a chapati. Once the dough gets ready, cover it with a wet towel and set aside. Meanwhile, we'll make the stuffing for which we will put a pan on low flame. Once the pan heats up, add some olive oil to it. To this, we will add freshly grated ginger. Saute it for a while. Now we will add grated cabbage and carrots to the mixture. cook them for about 2 minutes just to make them a little loose add a little bit of rock salt and black pepper mix well that's it your momo stuffing is ready now let's get back to the dough knead it slightly take a small ball out of it and roll it to make a thin round shape now wet its edges and place some filling in the center now pleating it is what gives momos its authentic look simply bring the edges together to cover the filling twist to seal and fill the rest in the same way now all All that you need to do is steam the momos for about 10 minutes. That's all your whole wheat momos are ready to dig in. A much healthier version of the regular maida momos, they still taste like heaven. Do give them a try. At number 6 is Thai green curry. Thai green curry is one of my favorite occasional treats. It's so full of flavors yet so healthy. To make it, put a teaspoon of coriander seeds, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, a couple of cloves and 4 to 5 peppercorns. Dry roast them for about a minute. An aroma from coriander seeds will waft from the pan. Their color will change a bit and that's when you turn the gas off. Now we will put these roasted spices in a blender and grind them. To this we will add lemongrass. I have two lemongrass sticks which I will gently pound and cut it into small pieces before adding them to the blender. Next goes in freshly cut ginger one chopped green chili one chopped onion and some coriander leaves five to six lime leaves one teaspoon of lemon zest one teaspoon of jaggery powder and some water to make a fine paste the paste looks smooth and perfect now we will heat up a pan for the curry put some coconut oil on it Now we will put green capsicum, yellow capsicum, carrots, baby corn, broccoli and some mushrooms. Saute for a while. Now pour the paste in a pan and cook it on a low flame for about 2 minutes. Add rock salt to taste. Cook for another minute or so and then turn off the stove. Now we will add in a cup of thick coconut milk. Add some lemon juice as well and stir well. That's all your Asian Thai curry is ready. Garnish it with some coriander leaves and treat it yourself with some semi brown rice. A blend of so many herbs and spices, the aroma and taste of this recipe is just unbelievable. You really need to try this one. Simply amazing. At number 5 is whole wheat pizza. Pizza still remains the number one choice of most people for that cheat meal. So let's treat ourselves with that tasty pizza at home and we will make it in a kadhai. Yes. To start with in a bowl add about 1 cup of whole wheat flour. Add just a little bit of water to make a dough. Add about 2 teaspoons of olive oil to it and knead it for another minute or so. Cover the dough with wet cloth and set aside for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile you can cut the vegetables for the toppings. Now roll the dough to make a flat bread. The next step is to take a plate and apply some butter or olive oil all over it evenly. Now place our pizza base into it carefully. Once set, take a fork and puff it all over the surface just like that. Now instead of putting those unhealthy sauces, we will apply the smooth grinding mixture of sorted onions and tomatoes. Now sprinkle some cheese over it. Next you can place your favorite toppings: onions, tomatoes, capsicum, mushrooms, paneer, whatever you like. Sprinkle some more cheese. 
Season it with rock salt, pepper, oregano and chili flakes. Just apply some melted butter onto the sides. Now comes the fun part. Take a large kadhai, pour about a glass full of salt into it. Don't worry, you can use this salt again and again to make pizzas. Next we will place a small bowl so that our pizza plate is 2 to 3 inches above the salt level. Cover the kadhai. Let it cook on a high flame for about 20 minutes. You can keep checking it in between. So that's it, your pizza is ready. See how well it has turned out. You won't believe it was made in a kadhai, would you? That's how baking was traditionally done in India. Of course, instead of salt, sand is used. Well, the pizza is super tasty. Definitely worth a try. At number 4 is Honey Chili Potato. Honey Chili Potato is another popular street food in India. And this one is much healthier and tastes so well. To make it, in a pan, put some water. Bring it to boil. Now add potato slices to it. Add rock salt. Let it boil until it's about 90% cooked. Now scoop them out. Sprinkle about 2 teaspoons of gram flour onto them. Evenly apply all over. Add some black pepper. Now in a pan, heat up some mustard oil and fry these onions until they are golden brown and crisp. The smoking point of mustard oil is very high, so it isn't an issue. Keep them aside. Now in a pan, add some sesame oil, some freshly grated ginger, chopped green chilli, one dried red chilli, spring onion and saute well. Add some red onion and capsicum to it. Cook them for a minute. Now add soy sauce, chilli sauce and tomato sauce to it. Put some black pepper and some rock salt. Add a little water and stir continuously. Now is the time to add the potatoes. Mix them too. Sprinkle some cut spring onion stalks. Add 1 teaspoon of sesame seeds to it. That's all, turn off the gas. Once it cools down a bit, drizzle honey. Mix well so that it gets evenly coated. Put it on a plate, garnish it with some spring onions and sesame seeds. Your healthy honey chili potato is ready. Without maida, corn flour or refined oil, this is a much much better version of what you get in the market. Moreover, we haven't heated the honey and it tastes so good. Try it out and relish it. At number 3 is Butter Paneer Sandwich. When I'm looking for something very healthy without making much effort, this quick and healthy butter paneer sandwich is what I opt for. To make it, simply put a tawa over the flame. Take 3 slices of whole wheat bread. Generously apply butter on each side. Keep the flame to low. Now place a large slice of freshly cut paneer onto it. Sprinkle some rock salt and black pepper. Cover with the other slice of bread. For the second layer, we will put another slice of paneer, sprinkle some rock salt and black pepper, some onions and capsicum as well. Put the third slice onto it. Let it cook for a few seconds and dig in. That's how simply it is made. And taste, oh my god, you will just love it. When you are busy enough to cook that occasional treat, instead of ordering online, go for this butter paneer sandwich. At number 2 is Indian Vegetable Pasta. This Indian style, flavorful and delicious pasta might become your next favorite. To start with, put a pan on high flame. Add 1 teaspoon of sesame oil to it and then put durum wheat pasta into it. Add some rock salt as well. Mix well and let it boil on a medium flame. Once the pasta gets cooked, strain out the pasta and put cold water onto it so that it doesn't overcook. Keep it aside. While on the other side, we will put a pan on low flame. Once the pan gets hot, we will add a tablespoon of olive oil into it. Put some chopped onions and chopped green chilli. Saute the onions for about 2 minutes. Now you can add in your favorite vegetables to it. Add a variety of them to get the maximum flavor. Let the vegetables cook for about 2 minutes. Now add some freshly grated ginger to it. Mix well. Now we will add tomatoes to it. Mix everything properly and then cover the pan and let it cook on a low flame for about 4 to 5 minutes. Now we will add rock salt and black pepper to the mixture. Mix well. Now is the time to add the pasta. Evenly coat the mixture onto the pasta. Cover the pan and let it cook for another 2 minutes. Turn off the gas, add 1 teaspoon of tomato ketchup and mix well. That's it, your Indian style pasta is ready. With the goodness of seasonal vegetables, using durum wheat instead of maida pasta, this is another healthier version of your favorite comfort food. Do try it. Finally, the number one occasional treat is Punjabi style paneer tikka curry. For those days when you feel like having paneer with an extra punch in it, Try this Punjabi style paneer tikka curry, one of my all time favorites. We'll start by making the masala. Add a tablespoon of besan in a bowl. 
put a bit of red chili powder, coriander powder, turmeric and rock salt to taste. Pour in just a little bit of water and mix well. The next step is to put thick square pieces of fresh paneer in this masala and evenly coat them on all sides. Once the masala is evenly spread, set it aside. Alright, now our masala is well set on the paneer, it's time to shallow fry them. For that, put 2 tablespoons of mustard oil in a heated pan and place the paneer pieces in it. Let them cook on each side until they are brown in color. So as you can see, our paneer tikka is properly done. Turn off the gas and keep them aside. Now we will take another pan for the gravy. Once the pan gets heated up, put 2 tablespoons of gram flour and roast it for a couple of minutes. Put it aside. Now in the same pan add 2 tablespoons of ghee. Once it heats up, put a teaspoon of cumin seeds and let them splutter. Now add onions into it. Put a pinch of asafoetida, turmeric powder, coriander powder, kasturi methi and freshly grated ginger in it. Saute the spices on a low flame for a while. Once done, we will add the tomato puree and a slit green chili. Now saute the mixture until the oil gets separated of the masalas. Now we will add that roasted gram flour in it. Mix well. Add some water to it. Mix again. Put some rock salt to taste and a bit of garam masala. Throw in some fresh coriander leaves. Next goes in our paneer tikkas. Mix them properly. Cover the pan and let them cook on a low flame for about 3 to 4 minutes. That's all, your paneer tikka curry is ready. Just one thing, add in some butter onto it to take its taste to the next level. Garnish it with some coriander leaves and serve it yourself with some multigrain chapatis. The authentic taste of Punjab. This appetizing protein packed dish from my own native place never ceases to impress me. I'm sure you will love it too. Give it a try. So friends, these were some of the healthier occasional treats that I feel you should try. Which one of these did you like the most? Let me know in the comments. The idea behind making this video was to convey that homemade food need not be always boring. And to give you all the reasons to stop ordering that stale food from outside and to eat all your favorite comfort foods at home. Having said this, do not eat them daily. These are occasional treats when you need a break from your regular meals. All the ingredients that I've used are linked down in the description box for you to buy them online. I want to thank Oziva for partnering with us for this video. Have you got hold of Oziva's protein and herbs made separately for men and women? Yes, these are two unique whey proteins with added herbs. One scoop of the men's version will give you 23 grams of protein, 5.5 grams of BCAA, multivitamins and herbs like ashwagandha and moringa for better stamina and recovery. While a scoop of women version will give you 23 grams of protein, 5.5 grams of BCAA, multivitamins and herbs like shatavari and tulsi for better hormonal balance. Not only this, Oziva's protein and herbs is sweetened naturally with stevia and has no artificial sweeteners, preservatives or soy. These two are truly one of its kind products in the Indian market. I highly recommend them to you. To buy them, click on the link down in the description box. Do not forget to apply the special discount coupon to get Rs 150 off on your order. So friends, that's all for this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If yes, then please show me your support by giving this video a big thumbs up. What next would you like to see in this series? Comment below. You can now support my work on Patreon so that I can bring more well-researched videos for you. Please do remember to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell icon so that you never miss a video from me. You can also follow me on Instagram where I regularly do Q&A sessions. My name is Vivek. I thank you so much for watching.